for this morning is found in 2 Peter 3.18. I want to talk about amazing grace, the grace of God. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God, and I say that about myself. If I'm anything, I am because of the grace of God. But look, look what it says, King James. Leave that King James up there. It's good. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. What does it mean to grow in grace? What is grace? Well, let me give you a little definition of grace. Grace is to get something that you do not deserve. Huh. Favor, mercy means you do not get a punishment that you deserve. But it fell on Jesus, didn't it? Compassion and forbearance. God is, God is abundant in grace and mercy, and we can read about it in the Bible. His greatest act of grace is the gift of salvation. That's why we cannot earn salvation. Salvation comes to us when we put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary for us. He bore all our sins. He bore all our iniquities. He's healed us of all our diseases. And we can rest on that and know that all the promises of God in Christ are yes and amen. God is the same today as he was yesterday. He has not changed. So we know that grace, salvation is a gift and that it is available to all people and how do we get it? Through faith. Everybody say faith. Everything that we get from beginning to end is by Everything that we get from beginning until the end is by faith. Right. You're coming right down the road. Real good. Absolutely. By faith. When the gift is accepted, eternal life is promised to, the, uh, to God's people. This eternal life is a promise of a home one day in heaven with God. The promise of the believer is sealed with the Holy Spirit as a guarantee that one day Jesus the Christ will return to earth to claim his purchased possession. You are, I am, God's purchased possession. He has purchased us with his own blood. The Bible says we do not belong to ourselves. I used to read that, and I didn't like it, but I like it now. Because how many of you know he takes care of his own? How many takes care of your own car? Raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. You take care of it. It's, it's your possession. You take care of it. Well, we are God's possessions. Therefore, take your hands off of God's possession. Amen. Devil. All right. So. That one day the Christ will return to earth to claim his purchased possession. Jesus purchased every sinner with his own blood on the cross at Calvary. Let's look at that scripture again. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace. What is grace? Well, unmerited favor. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is the spirit of grace. Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. Paul also says that we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. God's amazing grace. And in God's amazing grace, there is the power of God that operates in our very life. Grow in grace and knowledge, growing in understanding of that grace. <clears throat> you know, we can do things, and we may be motivated by our own ambitions or our own want-tos, or we want that, and we're motivated by that. But when you're motivated by grace, Grace has power, just like sin has power. The Bible talks about the power of sin has been dealt with by God. 
And now God has replaced that power of sin in our lives by the grace of God. But we need to grow in that grace. We need to grow in understanding of that grace. We need to grow in the understanding of how powerful God's grace is. I don't know if you've ever done anything, but you probably said, you know, I really need to, a good spanking. I don't know if anybody's ever said that besides me. Well, we can arrange that if you think that'll do the job, okay? Well, you got your paddle back there? <clears throat> we got one deacon that operates in that ad ministry called the Ministry of, all right. Invisible grace, and yet it's powerful that when you can graft, get grafted into it. You see, <clears throat> sometimes we can't get grafted into grace or into the love of God or even into the healing. See, when you're engrafted in something, you're able to draw the nourishment from that which you have been grafted into. How many understand that? How many has ever engrafted uh, flowers into flower bushes? We've been engrafted into Israel, the, the true vine. We're branches from that. If we, if we can understand that in the spiritual arena through faith, we can literally draw power and draw healing out of the Spirit of God to bring about the manifestation of that healing through faith. God honors faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's why I like that scripture. God's begun a good work in me, and he will continue that work until the coming of the Lord. My faith is not in what I do. My faith is in what Christ is doing in me. He's bringing that healing. He's bringing that strength. He's bringing that hope, making that hope alive. In him, I am grafted into him, and in him, <coughs> excuse me, is all the source of whatever we need. Just like in that little seed. In that little seed is everything that that plant needs. Have you ever planted corn? What comes from that little seed of corn? More corn. When you plant the seed of healing into the recesses of your being, when it gets deep in the inside of you, when the roots of that word, which is powerful, God maintains everything by the word of his power. But we'll plant the seed and we forget it and get our mind on something else in the seed doesn't produce or the devil will steal it and we wonder why we're not healed we wonder why we're not safe we wonder why we're not walking in victory <coughs> excuse me that's why practicing the word of God I mean day and night you meditate on it God told Joshua you want to be successful Meditate on my word. Paul talks about us meditating on the word of God that others might see that you are prospering, that you're prospering in that problem that you, that you think is a problem, but it's really a blessing. <coughs> the chances are you'd never come to the word of God unless you had a problem. You never know that God was a problem solver unless you had a problem. I've said in my life, Lord, I don't think I want any more problems. But I don't know if I would grow. That's what it says, but grow. Everybody say grow. grow. Now, let's turn the clock back. 20 years. How tall were you? About like that? 20 years have passed. How much are anybody growed any? <clears throat> huh? So you're just this tall now. You've grown down. Well, that's it. You're making progress. Grow in the grace of God. Grace of God. God's compassion. God's love. God's understanding. God's wisdom. 
grow in the grace of God. It's all mixed up in there. And as we meditate on it, that God loves me. Oh, uh, Frank was talking about his testimony about struggling. Does God love me? Rick, the same thing. Same thing here. Oh, God can love you guys. I mean, you look at you. You're handsome. You're pretty. <coughs> look at me. Ball-headed. Got a pimple on my nose right there. Right there. Right there. No, that, no, that, no. <laughs> No, 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 that's not my nose. This is my nose uh, right there. <coughs> right there's my pencil. Right there, that little bump right there. See, my girls, when they come over, can I squeeze it for you, Daddy? No. I want it to grow where you won't know the nose besides the, anybody, let's move on. <coughs> growing, growing, growing. How many people have money in the bank here in a savings account? Let's see. One, two, three, four. Get that down. <laughs> Is your bank account growing? It's called interest. Is there any doubt that it's not? No, you know it's growing because it's in the bank and God is Causing it to multiply. It's, it's growing. <clears throat> Notice this. God is the source of everything, and he is the one that makes everything grow. <coughs> so the thing we want to do is make sure we get the grace of God in us. Well, I became a Christian. Then you got the grace of God in you because Christ is the spirit of grace. And yet our spirit can grow we can grow in that grace. Now, here's how you know you grow. <clears throat> when you first start out in the Christian faith, somebody uh, <clears throat> makes you mad and offends you. Anybody ever been there besides me? I think I can preach better with my coat off. <laughs> Where was I at? Huh? Growing in grace. Nothing. Ma'am? Growing in grace. Oh, yeah, I remember now. When we first start out in our Christian faith, we get offended, right? Now, how many of you get offended now? That means lying. You know that you grow in grace because you can forgive people. Now you understand. <coughs> Give me my coffee. When you offended people, they forgave you. Well, I'll never forgive them. And you know, sometimes we can be hurt so deep. Listen, I am not being ugly, and I understand what it is to, to be hurt. It don't feel good. Some people have long spears. And how many of you know words is usually the spear, what people say to us? I'm, I, I'm, uh, <clears throat> and yet now... I know I have grown in the grace of God because I forgive people even before they stick me. Hello, are you out there? I want to say that I don't think this side hurt me. I said I forgive people even before they stick me. <coughs> Y'all didn't hear me. You, 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 but Bob, will you forgive me? I thought I'd forgiven you. See, God's already forgiven the world. Hello, are you out there? God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. He's already healed us. He's already saved everybody. 
All we have to do is acknowledge it, accept it, and receive it by faith. Everything from beginning to end is by unbelief. Faith. See, there are so many things that are invisible. You can't see the love that I have for Susan. Your husband cannot see the love that you have for him and vice versa. But I love that woman. You see, she sees the manifestation of it. We always tell each other, when we go to bed, she says, Bob, I love you. And I say, honey, I love you too. See, we, have, we are, after 60 years of marriage, we are so knitted together that literally I go, <laughs> and she goes, <laughs> I go, <laughs> and she goes, <laughs> <clears throat> I can be thinking something, and she can say it before I speak it out. She's been thinking the same thing. That's how close we are. We're one in the spirit. But that's how close we are to be in the spirit. We are one in the Spirit with Jesus Christ. He is our grace. There is grace upon grace, abundance of grace. Where sin abounds, grace abounds more. I know when you start talking about grace and God's love, people say, my goodness, if you, you know, they're just going to go ahead and love it. You don't understand grace. It's, the Bible says in Romans 2, 4, It's the goodness of God or the grace of God that brings us to repentance. My precious wife, she is so good to me that all I can do is go around the house and say, I am so appreciative of her. She is so good to me. And it creates into me, it creates in me gosh, I wish I had the words to explain it. I don't want to say fuzzy feeling, <clears throat> but that deep appreciation to have somebody that's looking out for me. If I turn my back, I don't have to worry about her stabbing me. If she's with some other women, she's not going to squeal on me. When I pick my nose at the table, she don't tell nobody. <laughs> Look at Missy. <laughs> Scratch that mic, okay, if it goes. <laughs> no, those are the things that people uh, real. Has anybody ever had a, a, a little discussion about that? In your marriage. Let me see your hands. All right, there's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. My mercy, don't blow your nose. Just let it drip. <laughs> Let's move on. <coughs> but see, I'm saying that, see, <coughs> when grace is operated in you, you're able to look over those little things. Are you listening? Don't let every little thing blow you out of the water. <coughs> I'm going to say that again. I don't think this I heard that. Don't let every little thing blow you out of the water. Don't let everything blow you out of the grace of God. People make mistakes. They boo-boo. Of course, we never have. <laughs> have we? Raise your hand if you have. If you're asleep, raise your hand. <laughs> gotcha. So have you grown in grace and knowledge? Have you grown in grace that you're able to overlook some things? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and give me the wisdom to know the difference and what? And the courage to change the things that I can. Got that? Got that, Joe? Good. 
You just have to look over some things. That's grace. Nothing changes the love of God. Nothing changes. It, it is an e it's eternal. I'm spitting out cough drops. <clears throat> it's eternal. He, he loves the worst of sinners. The apostle Paul was, was crucifying the church, doing everything he could to steal and, and rob the church and kill the church out. And who does God pick? Paul says, I'm the worst of sinners. That's what he said at one time. But now I'm on the other side of the cross. My, the grace of God has done wonders. Now that I have been through the contrite machine, I can stand and declare the goodness of God. For it has brought me to repentance again. The grace of God. Oh, if I could express what I know on the inside of me. If it had not been for the grace of God, where would I be? If it was not for the grace of God, how could I make it another day? If it had not been for the grace of God, working through my wife, I would definitely be a castaway. Because she has grown in grace and knowledge. She has been the best helpmate that I could ever have. The grace that was imparted into her was imparted to me. Oh, the grace of God. Doubt your doubts. Never doubt the grace of God. Never doubt. Let's look at that word knowledge. <clears throat> yeah, Jesus. He was with God before the beginning. He's always, he is God. He's always been. He's eternal. No beginning, no ending. As far, it's hard for us to understand something outside of the eternal realm. We're in the, in the, in the natural realm. We're in the timeline of but God is in eternity. No beginning, no end to eternity. It's hard for our minds to conceive that. But the knowledge that we have of his graciousness, of his compassion, the knowledge of how much he loves me. Oh, when you can grow to that point, to have the knowledge of God of how much He loves you. Your whole life will just change. It just changes. I can remember 26 years old when I was sitting there in the pew. Excuse me, folks. I'm running over. <coughs> I cannot understand it. I don't want to understand it. I can't understand it. It's okay. It's God's grace. Six years, Susan had been married. I was 26 years old, sitting there about where Aurora was sitting. The preacher up there giving announcements. As I think back, and I've been thinking about it for the last year, of how God actually, His grace, His spirit... It's like, where, am I, where are we going, Lord? Where are we going? He brought me all the way to the front. There I'm standing right there. <clears throat> Preacher right here making an announcement. Can I help you, sir? <clears throat> <clears throat> he 
Yes, sir, I want to be saved. Do we ever, have anybody ever been in a Baptist church? You don't do that in a Baptist church. You wait on the, the invitation. <laughs> but when you got the hand of the Lord on you, my child, you're coming out of that seat. <laughs> you might carry the seat with you. <laughs> and all I know, I need a little demonstration here, son. All I know, the Lord have just go with me now, okay? Go with me. Come on. Oh, man, I tell you, that's right on down to the altar. That's right. All right, you go be, I appreciate that. The grace of God. A little country boy. Who am I for God to call me to preach the unsearchable riches of God, the great salvation? The Hebrew writer said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? This great salvation, the grace of God, the Holy Spirit brought me up. Now let me tell you something. That week I was out drinking. That week I was smoking. That drink I was cussing. That week, I was doing my thing. When I, that was on Sunday. I went back to work on Monday. I had my little Bible right there. And I began to open that Bible, and God began to use me to win souls to Christ. Just like that, within 24 hours, I began to preach. I didn't know hardly anything. And I tell you, the more I walk with God, the less I know now. Because he's so vast, he's so big. But there's something that grace was working in me. I had to tell people about Jesus. I had to tell people how he changed me. How he took me out of darkness and put me in, into the very kingdom of God. How he made me a son of the living God. How he came into my heart and changed my life. And how he changed and and honored her prayers. Did you do any praying in those days, baby? Every day. Every day she was praying. You cannot get away from a sanctified, holy, dedicated, consecrated prayers of a righteous woman. Women, don't give up the ship. Just keep praying. And besides, I'm going to tell you something. Every time you pray, you get stronger. Sometimes, Lord, I said, Lord, I've prayed about everything. Just go over it again. Just keep praying. Because you're in the presence of God. And when you're in the presence of God, that's where, that's where you receive the grace and the help in time of need. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 tells us that. Come to the grace of God. Come to the throne of God. To, for what? For what? To receive. To receive. To receive what? Grace and help in time of need. Susan sometimes takes this steak. Anybody here like steak besides me? All right. Let's see if people like steaks. Okay. You got any at your house? <laughs> what time will it be ready? <laughs> we'll be there. But she takes this uh, <clears throat> barbecue sauce and this... Um, <clears throat> vinegar and whatever else she puts in there and she lets she lets the steak soak <laughs> now where you how you gonna get out of this bob well, the lord will help me i know she lets the steak soak and the steak <clears throat> doesn't know how to absorb those juices but it does it just does it just sucks all that juice and all that into its property. And then when, we, when I put it on the grill and put it on your plate, 
man, this is good because I let it soak in the grace of God. See, we think because we can't see it, it's not real. Rick's got a ladder back there. Rick, would you just, let's see. Yeah, well, put the ladder up there and screw that ball out, out there, that light bulb out there, and we'll let, uh, let's see, who, who will climb the ladder? Now, there's something in there you can't see. You, you climb the ladder? <laughs> you climb the ladder? <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to climb that ladder. <laughs> but you climb that ladder, and you put a little juice on your finger, and you stick it up in there. You don't have to fear. You can't see it. Someone says, I, uh, <clears throat> I don't believe in anything I can't see. I said, uh, get the ladder. <clears throat> climb the ladder. And you stick your finger in there, put a little water on it. In fact, stand in this water here, on, right here up there on that ladder, and, and just stick your finger up there. I ain't going to do that. Why? Well, I, there's electricity in there. Where? I don't see no electricity in there. But you turn the switch on, the switch on. See, some folks' switch is broken. It's called unbelief. Hello, unbelief. I really believe unbelief is the sin of death that leads to, to death, leads to that sin of death, that unbelief. The, the, the Israelites had a tremendous problem with unbelief in the desert. <coughs> I was reading the other day about don't let unbelief come in. But you can't see God's love. You can't see God's grace. But yet it is power in the Word of God. You cannot see the power that's in that Word. You cannot see the DNA in that little seed that you plant. But God has put everything that that corn stalk and the corn needs in that one little seed. Everything is in it. Put it in the ground, sunlight, rain, earth. The, isn't that some, I've often wondered, why don't the roots go up and the stalk go down? Because God has programmed in it, root, you go down and you suck up the nourishment. <clears throat> stock, you grow and let the corn cobs begin to pop up there and all the corn. That's God's grace. But you can't see it. But it's operating in everything that we see. God's grace. Well, they got a change there. It said, let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor, that's grace, to us sinners, that we may receive, 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 receive mercy for our failures and find grace, grace, Grace. Everybody say grace. grace. Not grapes, but grace. grace. To help in good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. How many heard this story about the guy on the roof? And he began to slide down the roof. Four stories high. He's sliding. He said, oh God, Save me, save me, save me. And he gets to the end of the thing, and there's a nail there. And the nail catches his pants, and he's hanging over like that. And he says, never mind, Lord, the nail got, saved me. Anyway. <clears throat> See, sometimes we don't give God the credit, even though he may use a natural thing to save us. God's grace, Whew. God, knowledge, to have knowledge of how much God loves me. We used to sing this to kids. Susan teaches this in the nursery. God loves me, this I know. For the B-I-B-L-E tells me so. God loves me. Because the B-I-B-L-E tells me he loves me. And God is not a man that he should lie. Not a man that he should lie. 
Oh, I've struggled with that, Frank. I've struggled. Anybody else struggle with that? Sure. Anybody else? This is your chance to raise your hand. Anybody want a million dollars? Raise your hand. <laughs> Where would you be without the grace of God? Listen, i got a question. If God has begun a good work in you, and he says, I will continue that work until the coming of the Lord, what is there to fear? <coughs> he says, I'll never leave you, I'll never leave you, I'll never leave you. Hebrews 13, find a verse. Start with verse, I think it's 15, I'm not sure. Powerful scripture. Through him, therefore, let us constantly and at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise. <coughs> you know, sometimes it's a sacrifice. Over, I'll start talking. <laughs> sacrifice of praise. <laughs> sacrifice of praise. <laughs> I dare you to start it. I dare you. Go ahead. Come on. Come on. got happy. Let's see. Look at here. You get happy. Just put your feet in the river Jordan, but the water is flowing. I know, but where's your faith at? I left it back home, but you better get it. <coughs> okay, here we go. Whoop. The water did not stop until they put their foot down and almost touched the water and the water, whoop, and they walked across on dry land. Dry land. Let me tell you one thing and I'm going to close. See, these things have been made alive to me. I only preach the revelation knowledge that God gives me. I've lived long enough to accumulate a lot of revelation knowledge, and that's what I preach. It's so alive to me. <clears throat> but let it absorb into you. You receive it by faith. It can become alive to you. <clears throat> Was I going to read that? Yeah, that's good. Let your character or moral disposition be free from love of money, including greed <clears throat> and lust <clears throat> and craving for earthly possessions, and be satisfied with your present circumstances. I am satisfied with pork and beans. See, when I was a boy, we just had uh, grits and, and, and squirrels. And every once in a while, I'd find a possum on the side of the road. That was always a treat. Just kidding. Beans, look at With what you have... For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, or relax my hold on you. Surely not. Now that's what you put your faith in. Are you listening? See, we talk about faith and believing for this. But listen, believe in God. Believe that God, God, God that spoke. And everything came into creation. Every creation thing you see came into being. <coughs> Put your faith in God. He'll never let you down. Never will he let you down. 
Never, son, never. Never. Man might, but not God. Not God. Yeah, but I might die. Absent from the body. Present with the Lord. <sighs> Absent from the body. Present with the Lord. Do you hear the guy that uh, lived a pretty long life? And he finally passed away and he's in heaven. And he said, oh, man, this is great. This is wonderful. Why didn't I get here earlier? And the Lord said, you would have if you hadn't have eaten all that oatmeal. It's supposed to keep you alive. You know, oatmeal is good for your heart and all that. Okay. Go out of this place trusting God. His grace is sufficient. You're going to have troubles and tribulations. In fact, we ain't seen anything yet. Have you been uh, watching the news about what's happening in California? No water. What was that sermon Pastor Bob preached about? Trusting God. No water. That means no food. I tell you what, this is how I'm going to do it, and I think it'll work. None of us but me and Susan will eat any food until next Sunday. <laughs> and then, and then when, when, when you come back, we'll talk about gosh, I didn't realize. How important food was. And we eat and we don't even we don't even sometimes don't even bow our head and, and say, Thank you, Father, of this food. Young people think the food grows in the refrigerator. Is that what you believe? Look at I see what he believes. <laughs> That's right. Don't, 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 it's okay. You know, food don't grow in the refrigerator. Did you know that? Your daddy and mama works. Go shopping. Put food in the refrigerator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thanked your, uh, your daddy and mom for the food in the refrigerator? Well, I'm just stirring your memory. Have you ever thanked your pastor for letting you sleep in church? <laughs> <coughs> just so good to have that chair filled, I'll tell you. <laughs> See, it's God's grace. Go ahead. It's God's grace. It's God's grace from the beginning to the end. It's God's grace. We owe our spiritual birth to God. First, uh, um, St. John chapter 1, verse uh, 13. We owe our spiritual birth and we owe our natural birth to God. Those two little seeds came together. Bloop. And everything in those two little seeds, this is what you have. Your eyes, everything. That's our God. Wow! All of your character, all of your DNA, everything. Color of your hair, everything was in those little seeds. That's how great God is. Tremendous. God's grace. And see, people don't understand because, see, once you begin to receive God's grace, that's when you begin to function. See, it's God's grace, it's God's goodness that leads us to repentance. Can you understand that? I want to say that again. It's God's goodness that leadeth us to repentance. I don't know if you've experienced that yet in your life. Anybody have experienced that yet? Raise your hand. I have. Well, look, there's quite a few people. And it makes you want to do what is right in the sight of God. It makes you love Him. It makes you want to exhort Him. It makes you want to clap into the Lord. It makes you want to just spend time with Him. 
For I have fallen in love with Jesus. I don't understand all I know. I love him so for his goodness has made me what I am and we call it grace amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like you and me. Remember, we are what we are by the grace of God. Let's bow our heads. Father, I want to thank you that we might be able to absorb the goodness of God, that we might understand how much you love us, that we might understand you started this thing and you're going to finish it. We thank you, Father, for the power of grace. I love you and I praise you, Father. Be thy glorified in our lives today in every aspect. And Lord, if there's anybody here that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, may they come up that we can share the gospel with them. I want to thank you for that right now. In Jesus' name, amen. You may stand to your feet, turn to somebody. You might want to pray for them. You might want them to pray for you. Speak to them. Tell them you love them. You appreciate them. God